Hi, this is Elaine. The session today is to help you to change the way you feel and think when someone in your life makes you feel small, teases or hurts you. Now, whether you're at school or whether this happens socially, online, wherever, there are people who seem to take pleasure in making you feel bad. Now, your reaction or the way you respond to this is often why they keep repeating the behavior. So what if you could respond in a different way or not at all? So this session is to help give you some tools to help you feel safer, to help you feel more confident and in control. So enjoy. So are you comfortable? Just move your body a little to make sure your head is supported, that you're warm enough. And once you feel just right, then just watch and listen to your breathing. Notice the sound as you breathe in and in the sound as you blow out. Blow out slowly through your mouth. And notice each time you breathe in and out You might even notice your body becoming just a little more relaxed. You start to feel a little more settled. And all you have to do is to listen to my voice. to the words that I say. It's really very easy. And if at this point you still have your eyes open, you can close them or leave them open. It actually doesn't matter. It's whatever makes you more comfortable. And as you lie there, you might notice any other sounds around you. Take note of them. And then bring your attention back to my voice. And then watch and listen to your breathing. Breathing in through your nose and slowly, very slowly out through your mouth. A few more times now. In through your nose and out through your mouth. And I wonder if you can notice the difference in 
the way your body feels now. As you listen to your breathing, as you listen to my voice, I want you to notice where your fingers are right now. And move them a little. Just be aware of your fingers and what you're touching, the covers, the side of the bed or chair. Maybe they're just by your side. Maybe you can feel the fabric, the sheet, the covers. Just notice how they are. Can you notice any scents or aromas or smells in the air? Let your nose find any smell. Maybe just the smell of the soap on your body or shampoo in your hair. Or maybe the smell of the freshly washed sheets. I don't worry if you can't smell anything at all, that's perfectly fine. Now you might just want to take a nice big sigh in and I'll get on with the story. So are you ready? The story today is about Pippa, the platypus. Do you know what a platypus looks like? Well, she's a rather odd looking animal who lives in the Australian bush. And her picture is on the thumbnail and also on the video if you want to see her. Now, Pippa was normally a happy, easy-going platypus who loves to swim and play and eat and laugh. But there was one thing that made her feel very sad and this thing upset her very much. You see, because she was different, she was unusual, a little funny looking. She often got picked on by some of the other animals in the bush. They called her names, they made fun of her flat black nose, her round shape. This happened almost every day and sometimes she was so sad and upset She did not want to move out of her burrow. She was also a little bit scared because although they were only words, they really hurt her deep inside and no one else really knew how bad she was feeling. One day as Pippa was lying in the sun at the side of the creek, a big brown strange looking duck called Dylan was swimming past her. He had a very long neck and a huge yellow beak and bulging eyes. Hello, said Dylan. Lovely day, he said jovially. Pippa looked up at the strange looking duck with her sad eyes as this was not a good day. Already some of the animals had been making fun of her 
so she just wanted to be on her own. Are you okay? said Dylan as he swam over to Pippa, noting that her eyes looked very sad. Yes, yes, I'm fine, she said. You look very sad, said Dylan, on this wonderful day. Do you want to come for a swim and maybe I could help to cheer you up, he said. Oh, okay, said Pippa. That, that would be really nice. So she slid into the water and Dylan followed her. They dived up and down and round and round. She swam slow and then really fast. Dylan followed her as fast as he could but noticed that she was a very good swimmer and he could hardly keep up. After a while, both Dylan and Pippa swam back to the bank to get dry. Pippa noticed that Dylan's feathers were not even wet and her fur was soaking wet. So how come your feathers are not wet? She said to Dylan. Well, he said, you see, I have this waxy substance all over my feathers and it means that when water lands on it, it just slides off the wax. So I just don't get wet or cold. It's actually only my feet and my beak that get wet. Whoa, said Pippa. That is so good. It also comes in handy for something else, said Dylan. Sometimes the other ducks make fun of me because I'm big, because I have a long neck and they think I look funny. So I imagine that Waxy good stuff is all over my body, just like a bubble. And every time someone says something mean or upsetting, I imagine those words bouncing off the bubble. That is so cool, said Pippa. Yes, said Dylan. It works every time. Can you show me how to do that? said Pippa. I also have people say cruel and mean things to me. I mean, I have this big flat black beak and I have a funny shape too. They just don't understand how much it hurts when they say these nasty things. I guess not, said Dylan. This bubble just helps me to ignore it and it works for me. So how about we have some lunch, have a little sleep and then I'll show you. Okay, said Pippa, very excited at the thought of that bubble. Now Dylan had a brown paper bag. And out of it, he pulled a very pretty tablecloth made of leaves. He then pulled out a jar and emptied a mixture of delicious food, worms, insect larva, freshwater shrimp, all of this into a large leaf. I wonder if Dylan knew that this was Pippa's favorite food. She was so excited, and she chomped her way through this feast. Thank you, Dylan. You are so very kind, said Pippa. You are welcome. Pippa, glad you enjoyed it. And he nibbled on a bit of it too. 
But now I'm really tired, said Pippa. And she yawned and lay down on the leaves and easily went to sleep. Dylan curled his legs up and lay down beside her and he also let out a big yawn. And as the sun warmed their feathers and fur, the two animals went into a deep sleep. If you also feel tired, you can go to sleep too. In fact, you can go to sleep anytime during the story. About an hour later, they both woke up feeling refreshed and Pippa was ready to hear what Dylan had to say about the bubble. Okay, said Dylan, we're going to go on a little journey in your head using your imagination, Pippa, okay? First, I want you to get really comfortable. And then, I want you to close your eyes. Now, I want you to imagine a special place where you feel really really relaxed, where you feel calm and safe. Now, this can be a place you've been to before, maybe a place you went on holiday or maybe a place in your house. Or you can make it up, it can be a fantasy place. Can you find that place, Pippa? Yes, yes, I can, Dylan, said Pippa with her eyes tightly closed. Is this place hot or cold? What colours do you see around you? Can you smell anything? scents, aromas in the air. What do you hear? Listen. Are you inside or outside? Pippa felt really good in this place. She liked the way it made her feel. So safe, so comfortable. Now, said Dylan, in your special place, I want you to imagine there is a fountain there. A beautiful fountain and it's full of bubbles. Red, blue, green, purple, white, yellow, any colour you like, but there are bubbles everywhere. Yes, yes, I see that, said Pippa. So, go over and pick out a bubble. So Pippa imagined herself getting up going over to the fountain and picking up a yellow one. You see, yellow is her favourite colour. I wonder what your favourite colour is. As she put her hands around it, she saw it was soft and wobbly. that she could move it to make it big or small. So 
was stretchy. Okay, said Dylan, now imagine standing on the bubble and pulling it up around you. Pippa noticed that as she did this, the bubble kind of moulded to her body and the yellow colour faded so anyone looking at her could not see the bubble. But she felt very safe and warm with this bubble around her. Like she was inside a cocoon. I want you to imagine yourself now, Pippa, walking through the forest. Like it's maybe tomorrow. And I want you to notice all those mean animals are there watching you. And they start to shout those mean things, those hurtful things. Now, I want you to watch the words, Pippa. Watch the words. And as Pippa watched, the words bounced off her protective bubble. And they just vanished into thin air with a pop. Now the animals weren't sure what was going on and continued to throw those hurtful comments at Pippa. But the bubble kept rejecting those words and she found that soon she couldn't even hear the words, they became unclear. And then, and then she noticed the mean animals were getting bored and started to move away. Oh my, said Pippa, my wonderful bubble. Now, said Dylan, every morning when you get up, I want you in your head to go to your very safe and calm place. Find your fountain, choose your bubble. You can choose a different colour every day if you want. Just like when you choose your clothes. And then with your bubble in place, all around you, you are ready for the day. Oh, and by the way, you find your bubble in less than a minute, so don't worry about not having time in the morning. Pippa opened her eyes. She had a little tear streaming down her face. You see, this had been a problem for so long and no one, no one really knew how hard it was. The hurtful comments, the harsh words, the meanness she experienced almost every day just because she was different. Just because she didn't look like everyone else. Or maybe think like everyone else. She is proud of who she is. She likes her flat black beak and never again Will she ever let those mean animals upset her in the same way again? Her bubble will protect her, make her strong. Her bubble will always be there for her. It was her imagination that created that bubble. And she is the boss of her imagination.
Now Dylan watched with delight as he saw Pippa connecting with the bubble. He was very happy because he knows what it feels like. And he still goes to the bubble fountain every day. The sun was starting to set in the sky. It was time to go home. Dylan said goodbye to Pippa. I don't know how to thank you enough, Dylan. I will always be grateful and please come and visit again one day soon. You are very welcome, Pippa, and yes, I will come back one day for lunch. He jumped into the water and slowly swam downstream, waving at Pippa. Pippa found her barrow and dug herself in, and in a matter of seconds, she felt herself falling asleep. She noticed she still had her yellow bubble on, making her feel safe and warm. Tomorrow would be a good day.